Great. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is uh, James Isley. I'm the CEO and uh, founder of a company called uh, Cognizant, uh, which is in the sales intelligence space. Um, so my presentation today is really AI for B2B lead generation and growth through acquisition. Um, so I'm covering both topics, which are very you know big topics um, in a, quite a short space of time. So I'm going to go through this um, these these points fairly quickly, but hopefully it gives you a, a good um, broad overview of um, you know what my company focuses on which is really how to get new growth um so here are my contact details so if you've got any questions afterwards uh, you can even just take a photo of that um that q code uh, and then um, connect with me on linkedin and then just feel free to ask me any questions at all um and i can go into any of these topics in more depth so why um do you want to use uh, machine learning for um lead generation or in, in, in your sales process or marketing process. Uh, the big reason is really that it's getting harder and harder to do sales. This is a great slide from um, Winning by Design or a great chart, which really shows the number of sales qualified leads per month that a company can generate. Uh, and as you can see, like this is from 2014 to 2018, and then I'm sure it's um, kept on decreasing since then. Um, basically, the, the because, you know, it, uh, there was a time when it was very easy to email people and get responses, um, call people and get responses. Now, um, because of the fact that so many people are calling and so many people are emailing and there's so much automation um, that's now happening, uh, people are kind of flooded with inquiries. So it's, it's a lot um, harder to reach your audience and engage your audience. So that's where we need to use really smart technology and smart techniques to really um, find those people that really have an intent to buy right at the moment. Uh, the other big reason is because the data privacy compliance. So the, the other thing that's stopped us um, outreaching so much um, or has certainly added more caution and more or more so there's administration to the outreach is compliance. Um, so we have new laws um, in Europe with the GDPR compliance, um, in Canada with CAN-SPAM and um, uh, in um, uh, well, Castle. Uh, we also have um, the new California legislation, CCPA, and there's more legislations on the way. So navigating that global compliance, and for instance, you, know, you might be able to email somebody in the United Kingdom, but you can't email them in Canada um, for a first step, or in Germany where you need to um, get permission to, to email somebody by phone first, for instance. So th there's lots of different rules in different countries and navigating those and staying compliant um, is tricky. So, so you need you know, support help with that side of things as well. Um, how, you know, how you do that, you know, th there's plenty of solutions on the market, um, Cognizant's uh, one solution. You know, um, and so you know, use a tool to build an audience and then outreach to that audience. Just you know, our own uh, growth, which has been through a mostly through organic um, um, growth. You can see we've got this uh, constant um, increase. Uh, we've now actually got a, um, our monthly AR growth up to about a million um, per month, um, and it's really. A, by getting the whole engine working so getting the outbound engine working uh, and and targeting the right audience by building audiences smartly and then also having our inbound en engine uh, working so we to the point where we have like a 50 50 split between inbound and outbound um sales qualified ops that are coming in and closing uh, we we also have um another part of the company which is the part, part we acquired so we've been doing the inorganic growth we're currently in another um acquisition at the moment um, or reviewing one. Uh, so Maltastic was an email signature platform. And again, this was really about engaging the audience. So this is a, a solution where which really attaches to your um, email um, and puts a banner which advertises webinars, etc. We used it ourselves, which is why we decided that we wanted to acquire this company. Um, and so this is um, this is also like an, we added this to we we acquired Maltastic to add uh, growth. Um, in an inorganic way. Um, Mailtastic was a company that was founded in, in Germany, in, in Mainz, um, founded in 2015. When we acquired them, they had 350 European clients. Um, and yeah, the, and they had a, a, like a negative net dollar churn as well, which was, was fantastic. Um, in terms of machine learning and its use in uh, B2B lead generation and sales, um, and why you want to add um, 
intelligence. It's, it's really about the audience you build. You want to make sure that the audience that you're outreaching to and the list that you're um, either your outbound team are using to call, dial um, and engage from an outbound perspective, or your marketing team is targeting through Google Ads, LinkedIn, um, all, all of those um, inbound channels is the right audience. So that's that, that's having an audience that, um, so for instance, we use machine learning and we have patterns around automated persona building. So for instance, we have technology that can scan your CRM system, look at your current clients and then suggest similar types of companies that you haven't yet engaged. That's one technology. Um, other key things are, for instance, understanding job titles. So, um, you know, potentially you have software that you sell to customer success rep representatives in the United States, but what is that job title or who are the similar people with similar skill sets in Germany or France? Um, so th these are kind of um, key, you know, key things you don't want to be getting wrong when you're doing outreach, because if you if you target the wrong audience, you're going to get lower, lower open rates, um, lower engagement rates, uh, and then, then that will feed right through your pipeline to um, a lower number of deals that get closed. Um, so we work, we use machine learning across um, all of the data that we have to really improve the quality of the data, to improve um, our understanding of companies, their internal structures, to improve um, the, the exact people, um, to, to make sure that, you know, I, oh, the other thing is that job titles evolve. Um, and, you know, for instance, um, data scientists, um, you know, the, you, they have different titles across lots of different companies, for instance. So just finding those similar people with similar skills um, so that you're not missing people because you, you're typically sales teams or marketing teams have a very fixed idea about the personas they're outreaching to, and that can kind of limit their vision and then limit their ability to engage with the most relevant audience. And those are the types of problems we solve, which really goes back to then helping that um, engagement rate. Um, yeah, so the second part of the presentation um, is really about growth through acquisition. Um, so the other way to grow, apart from the organic way, um, which is you know what the first part of the presentation covered is um, growing through acquisition. And we've done one acquisition. Um, I hope to do more. Um, reasons for acquisition. So one of the big reasons is really increased, um, of course, increased growth. So you can grow uh, far faster. I um, mean, if I look at our, our big, uh, biggest US rival, um, which is Zoom Info, they've done an incredible job of taking debt on and then buying companies in their space. Um, and if you look, they, they recently IPO'd and that's proven to be a very successful strategy with huge rewards for their investor base by leveraging debt um, to just speed up that growth. Uh, once you're also at a certain size, you, you know, that, that gives you access to debt at lower rates, which again, so there's a whole, um, you know, just getting big, um, brings big, big brings big benefits if you do it correctly. Um, and then also, you know, having extra products helps your upselling. So if you've got a great, um, I suppose, um, engine in terms of sales, a, bit, a, a great uh, retention engine, which includes, for instance, account management, and a great account management team then you'll have the ability to sell other products and services to your customer base and that will help with net retention and you know that's the kind of key to it all is really getting that net retention over 100 percent um so that you can grow without even taking any new business on so that's one of the big reasons um for for, for, for the acquisition is really just to accelerate that growth um it's also lower risk to acquire a product, a new product, rather than build it out completely yourself. Um, all of the challenges, uh, all of that product market fit piece has been done, it's proven the, the, you know, the company, as long as it's a company that has a growing user base, um, has, has proven out that growth to, go to market. Um, and so you kind of remove that risk um, by, by acquiring that ability in learning new capabilities, you know, even if you're acquiring somebody that's in your own space, they've probably done a lot of things differently to you. You've probably done some things better than them. They've probably done some things better than you. And by acquiring them and then truly like integrating them, then you'll learn from those, um, you know, you'll learn what they've done better than you and then you'll form and make a better company if you're good at doing acquisitions. Um, so that that's that's another like key benefit to, to your acquisitions. And then the third, the, the fourth point I've got here is regional growth. So for us, we acquired a company in Germany that gave us a expertise, sales expertise, um, understanding data privacy laws in the local in the local country. Um, so that regional growth, uh, you know, that that really helps with bringing in all those expertise rather than having to. Uh, acquire uh, individuals that might not know 
really how to you know the, the whole picture from a from a company perspective um so it, it's a lot better to buy that in uh, from a with a whole company um because they would have they will understand all of the problems with running a company in that country rather than if you just bring individuals in that have just done um, independent roles at other companies. So that, that's another big um, reason to do acquisitions. Uh, problems though with uh, achieving success and problems that we found um, with, with um, the Meltastic acquisition. Um, I, I would say like the number big key one, the first one is systems. Um, so the, the whole reason that a company grows successfully is because it has great communication structures, um, that you have great reporting, you know, you understand the key metrics that you're driving towards, you understand when you're failing those metrics and you need systems to report those, all that data to you. Um, so um, that, that would, that's the kind of, um, that, that will, that will, that, that's a key one um, that's, that's been, that can kind of slow growth down is when you have very different systems and then you try and um, integrate them. So for instance, I, sorry, yeah, I lost my internet connection there. I apologize. Um, so just very quickly to tie it up, there's two little boxes left, um, just on the on the acquisitions piece, um, just uh, in terms of culture, um, so that, you know, the, one of the issues with acquisitions is uh, getting the team and culture to fit right, which we've done uh, very well at Meltastic, uh, but that can be a key um, issue with integration and then just management focus, um, you know, overall, um, you know, how do you grow, um, you know, if, if you're going in organic, uh, there's a lot, a lot of management time, a lot of senior team are going to be um, drained in um, focusing on that acquisition and not on growing internally. And that's a key problem that you need to address. Um, so, you know, all of those together, um, you know, and if anybody wants to talk about acquisitions or is thinking of any, um, I'm happy to share our experience. Um, and just, I suppose, overall with the themes of everything, you know, just what we've seen with machine learning, we have uh, our chief science officer is James Hudson, uh, who's a former head of AI at Bloomberg. Um, you know, we, we found that, you know, really, um, Investing in your machine learning team, the data science team really just give you a competitive advantage because really good data scientists um, can can take, you know, the, you know one of the big problems we have is managing large quantities of data, structuring it, and there's a lot of value in structuring that data intelligently. Um, but you need group people and you need um, you know investment, and it isn't a six month thing. It's taken us three years of work to get any sort of um, output. Um, that actually has an impact on our on our products. So we had the products, and then we had the data science that's making the products more intelligent. But that was a three year journey.